Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be going over the first quarter earnings for NVIDIA this fiscal year. NVIDIA today, or not today, but recently in the last trading day, they went up about 5% in a single day. Over the last month, they've been pretty flat. Over the last three months, they're trading down about 21%. And then over the last year, they are up 22%, which is pretty good considering where the overall market has been over the last couple of months now. And then over the last five years, they are completely dominating and beating the market out of the water by being up about 427% over the last five years. So I'm just going to go into their recent first quarter earnings report to try to figure out what the financial outlook is for NVIDIA moving forward. And then as always, I'm going to end the video off by figuring out what the intrinsic value per share of NVIDIA's stock price is so that we could figure out what a good buying price would be to buy into NVIDIA from a value investing perspective. So leave a like on the video. It really helps out this video and helps this channel grow. And let's get right into it. So right here we have NVIDIA's first quarter earnings summary report. And we can see from this little chart right here that they go over a couple of the metrics for their first quarter. They have their gap metrics and their non-gap metrics. And I'll explain the difference shortly right here. But as we can see right here, their first quarter revenue was up about 46% year over year up to $8.29 billion. And we can also see that their gross margin was up about 140 basis points from 64.1% to 65.5% year over year. So not only did their revenue increase, but their operating expenses, or not their operating expenses, but their cost of revenue also decreased over that same period. And then we can see right here that their operating expenses actually shot up pretty dramatically. They went up about 113% year over year, which obviously dwarfs the 46% increase in revenue they experienced year over year. But this isn't really that alarming of a statistic because the main driver for this increase in operating expenses came from a one-time acquisition termination charge of about $1.5 billion. They actually touch on it up here somewhere. We can see right here, they say <clears throat> that for their gap earnings per share, it was about 64 cents per share, down 16% from a year ago, and also down 46% from the previous quarter. But it primarily came as a result of this $1.5 billion arm acquisition termination charge. And so if we scroll back down to look at these metrics, we can see that that obviously had a pretty negative impact on their operating income. Their operating income was down 4%. And then their net income ended up being down 15% as a result of this one-time charge they experienced in quarter one. But if we actually exclude that one-time charge from the first quarter and we look at their non-GAAP financial metrics, we can see that across the board, NVIDIA has definitely outperformed themselves year over year. Revenue is obviously still up 46% because the one-time arm acquisition charge doesn't affect the top line but in terms of the following metrics we can see that the operating expenses in the gap metrics they went up 113 percent but in the non-gap metrics they went up only 35 percent the operating income was up 55 percent year over year and net income was up 49 percent year over year so despite the fact that their stock price has been tumbling over the last three months we can see that the current financial outlook for nvidia is actually looking pretty positive also if we scroll down a little bit here they start talking or pointing out their overall financial metrics they have their income statement their balance sheet and their cash flow statement and this is what I'm going to get into right before I get into the discounted cash flow analysis. But we can see right here, total revenue year over year is up from about $5.6 billion from last year up to what is now $8.29 billion in this most recent quarter. Gross profit increased from about $3.6 billion to $5.4 billion. This revenue is broken up into four segments that they went into not as much in detail in this report as they should have. So I went ahead and did a little bit of extra research just to figure out how this revenue is broken up. And they basically have about four operating segments for their company. They have their data center revenue, which is basically where they partner up with industry leaders like Alphabet, Google, and Microsoft. And they basically, or not Alphabet, Google, Alphabet, Amazon, and Microsoft, and they basically try to assist in the adoption of AI by selling their GPUs. 
Then they obviously have their gaming sector, which they're pretty famous for. And obviously in gaming, they're just trying to sell their GPUs to increase the graphics and processing power of different PCs and laptops and gaming. Then they also have their last two operating segments, which are professional visualization and automotive and robotics. Professional visualization is basically just like them helping companies with design, manufacture, and architecture. And then automotive is exactly what it sounds like. They're basically trying to help self-driving cars become more autonomous in their self-driving capabilities. And of this total revenue amount of $8.29 billion, about $3.73 billion of it came from data center revenue. And then $3.62 billion came from gaming. About $620 million came from professional visualization. And then for the automotive segment, it was about $138 million. So the revenues are diversified across a bunch of different operating segments. And across those different operating segments, the professional visualization revenue increased the most by increasing about 67% year over year. And then we can also see from their operating expenses here, they point out here, obviously the acquisition termination cost, this line item was the main driver for the total increase in operating expenses year over year. <clears throat> and then finally for their net income metric, we can see they had net income of $1.6 billion for the most recent quarter compared to $1.9 billion for the previous quarter last year, previous quarter one last year. Then right here we have their balance sheet and we can see if I scroll down here, their total assets from last quarter, quarter four of the last fiscal year to this quarter one, was about $44 billion up to $45 billion. So their business is expanding. And we can see that the majority of their business is financed by equity as opposed to liabilities. They have about $26 billion worth of shareholders equity and only $18 billion worth of total liabilities. So this basically means that they're not relying as heavily on debt to finance their business. And obviously as a result of that, the cash that they produce from their operating activities, which we'll see in the cash flow statement, they're able to then reinvest back into their business and also return value back to their shareholders in the form of dividends and share repurchases and share buybacks and things like that. And then lastly, we see their cash flow statement, which is the last statement that I'll get into before the intrinsic value analysis. And we can see right here that their net cash provided by operating activities for the first quarter came out to be about $1.7 billion, which is down from $1.8 billion in the first quarter of last year. And then also we can see from their investing activities that it stayed pretty much the same. They had net cash used in investing activities last year, and then for this year they had a net cash provided by their investing activities, so a cash inflow from their investing activities. And then lastly, we can see, in my opinion, the most interesting part right here, the financing activities. We can see all of the value that they've been returning to their shareholders in the first quarter. We can see that their repurchases of common stock definitely increased year over year. In the first quarter last year, they didn't repurchase any common stock, but this year they repurchased about $2 billion worth of common stock. And on top of that, they paid out about $100 million worth of dividends back to shareholders. So they're definitely returning a lot of value back to their shareholders. And now the last thing that I wanna to do to end off the video is figure out what the intrinsic value per share of NVIDIA is. And I have an Excel sheet right here, and I basically did the calculation before starting the video. Some of these metrics I got from Yahoo Finance, like the projected growth rate that analysts are estimating for the next five years, which is about 32% compounded annually. And then for the next five years after that, I was conservative and I cut that value in half to 16%. They had about $8.13 billion of free cash flow for 2021, which is when the analysis is starting. That's why it's year one. They have about $8.49 billion of cash on their balance sheet, and they have about 200 or 2.49 billion shares outstanding. And after looking at these metrics, we can see that the intrinsic value per share is estimated to be about $144 per share with a 30% margin of safety of $100 per share and a 50% margin of safety of $72 per share, which compared to their current share price means that Nvidia is currently trading at slightly above what their intrinsic value per share is perceived to be based on these estimates by analysts from Yahoo Finance. And so it means it could possibly present an overvaluation, 
But at the same time, their share price has tumbled from extreme, extremely high prices of nearly like $300 per share recently, or even higher than that, about $330 per share. So judging by that, it could be a good buy or sell depending on the type of return that someone is looking to get. Obviously, in my particular case, I used a discount rate of 10%. So we would be trying to get a 10% return by buying into NVIDIA at a $144 per share share price. But lastly, over here, I did a competitor analysis to see where NVIDIA stacks up against the rest of the industry. And we can see I compared them to two of their main competitors, AMD, which is Advanced Micro Devices, and then also Dell. And we can see that for gross profit margin, NVIDIA is definitely beating out AMD and Dell by quite a healthy margin at 64%. AMD is trailing behind at 48% and Dell is pretty much nowhere close at about 21%. Net profit margin, Nvidia is also dominating across the board at 36% compared to AMD's only 19% and Dell's 5%. And then in terms of return on assets, this is basically showing us which business is using their assets in the most efficient way possible to get a return on their business. We can see AMD is leading the charge here at about 29%, but Nvidia is close behind at about 26%. And all of these values I got straight off of their annual report just by doing a couple of easy calculations. So we can see compared to the rest of the industry that Nvidia isn't doing half bad, they're actually dominating in terms of net profit margin and gross profit margin. And on top of that, at the moment, they're currently trading pretty close to their intrinsic value per share of $144 per share. So it could present a good buying opportunity. Not too sure, but I would definitely love to know what everyone watching this video thinks. Is NVIDIA a buy or a sell? Let me know in the comments section down below. Leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see everyone in the next one.